This is Twit. Obviously, a lot of kind of your background, a lot of the reason that, that people know of you and your work is kind of steeped in this kind of root and, and ROM culture that mm-hmm. that is on Android. Um, and one question that I've had, and I only I merely asked this because it kind of reflects my own usage at this point. You know, back in the day, I had a Motorola Droid, and very early on, I learned to root and, and ROM the Droid, and, you know, I... I would flash new ROMs all the time, all the time, you know, whatever, whatever it took to bring yep. new functionality to my device. Then I got a, you know, and at a certain point I was flashing because I needed to in order to stay current because there were no more updates. Those nightly bills. And yeah, I remember that. Exactly. Yep. Just to stay current. And yeah. same with the Galaxy Nexus. Now I'm on the Nexus 5 and I have absolutely no desire to, uh, to do this. And so it just kind of has me wondering, like, are these improvements at the core of Android, uh, kind of making flashing ROMs less imperative? Do you think there's kind of a change going on in the, the root and ROM community right now? I, I I think we have reached what I'll call like peak flashing. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, th- there's always going to be like this subculture, this, you know, of, of users that want to like really tweak their, their ROMs out um, and like do all sorts of crazy stuff and really be on the bleeding edge of, you know, software and hardware. Um, and yeah, I think that user base, like in the U, in, at least from what I can tell from my analytics, is around 15 to 20 million people. And I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to see explosive growth beyond that, but I think that there is an opportunity, which is um, what, what you know, Cyanogen is pursuing to sure. provide a better experience um, you know, by platforming off of what um, these root users want. The, a lot of manufacturers have done a really awesome job. I'll, I'll, um, call it HTC for one of keeping their most more recent phones up to date at least. Um, so, yeah, like one of the primary draws, like you were saying, Jason, was to you know keep your phone up to date because your phone was abandoned by Motorola at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, HTC is doing a pretty good job. Like I think their latest phones are at least running 4.3 or 4.4 now, um, and they're they're consistently keeping it up to date. Um, so, I, I wouldn't say that it's going to go away, but I'm not sure it's going to be like I wouldn't say aftermarket is going to blow up, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it really has seemed like a, a very, well, and it still is, a, a vibrant community of very passionate, technology-minded oh, yeah. yeah. individuals. Uh, it just seems, in my mind, it's it's become a little bit less of a necessity, whereas at a certain point I felt like, uh, man, if I don't do this, I'm being left behind. I'm screwed. But I guess I, I also host an Android show, so yeah. <laughs> maybe that's part of it too. I well, and I know. think also you saw you saw lots of different kinds of applications that you could only do if you had rooted or if, if you had only done a ROM. And now, as we've grown, a lot of those are now available on the stock, or yeah. you know, like you know, some of those some of that functionality is no longer. You know, you don't have to go through this labyrinth to get to the end result. You know, now it's a little easier for people to access. So I'm kind of more curious what the future of you know the the ROM flashers and the modders and stuff like that will do that we don't have you know that that people who aren't flashing roms like what is the new functionality that they'll be able to unlock by doing that or, or test with it does it become more hobbyist at that point or is it are really the people who are pushing the boundaries of the platform the people who are flashing roms and doing that unique um kind of development i think i think that the the guys flashing roms are always going to be the ones pushing the boundaries and it's always been kind of a hobbyist thing i don't think that's going to change mm-hmm. um but i don't i i don't think it's going to grow or shrink in any fashion. I, I think it's kind of like matured and stabilized. Um, I would compare it to like, you know, people running like um, really obscure distros of Linux or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's always going to be people, people running like bleeding edge stuff. They're like doing really crazy things that, you know, end up showing up in like two versions of Android later or something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously Gina's not here. She was so sad that she had to miss this show. She was really looking forward to it. I guess that just means we're going to have to invite you back, uh, <laughs> which we, which of course we're going to do. Um, but she did uh, give me a couple of questions, one of which we've kind of already asked about, about Allcast. Um, another question that she had was, do you think that Google is has been a good, good steward of Android as an open source project? Um, yeah, I certainly do. I w- actually, one of the things I want to talk about, um, regards to your previous question about the necessity of rooting and flashing now, mm-hmm. um, Google has actually kind of removed that need to some extent by providing what are like really extensive system updates through, you know, their Google play services. Absolutely. Um, and this kind of came about because manufacturers, OEMs weren't shipping, you know, system updates 
quick enough and just essentially abandoning, you know, millions and millions of users. So in they, they're doing a great job, I would say, Google, of um, stewarding both the open source project and, um, you know, making sure that the consumers that, you know, bought whatever phone are also receiving regular software updates as best they can without manufacturer involvement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just... Um I was just on the Play Store yesterday, kind of looking through, and you know, when you go to the Play Store on your device, it shows you. Uh, like I was, I was setting, I believe I was setting up this Sony uh, Xperia Z2 tablet. It's a fancy tablet la, la, la. you got there. Anyways, it needed an update to Play Services, so when I went there, it showed me my rating and everything. It's funny to look at the <laughs> ratings for Play Services because so because it's such a misunderstood <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like you see all these ratings, one, two stars, like, oh, it does take up space in my phone. And <laughs> it does nothing, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, you're just sitting there going, no, actually it does everything. It is. Yeah. It's where the magic happens. Yes, exactly. You just, you just don't understand. It's a hard thing to explain when it comes across looking like right. an app.